what's it now? I know we're not inside, not what we're not with the layout. No. I thought, you know, since it's a nice, lovely day, well, evening at the moment, it's about 8 o'clock, and the sun is right over there. I thought this would be a good intro piece, and why not? So, uh, about a good couple weeks ago or so, I asked on several Facebook pages of modeling forms, so to speak, of uh, general QI, Q&A questions, really. And today I'm answering them. I had to have time to gather the questions up, figure which ones are worthwhile, and in that time, a whole list of questions suddenly went missing from one of the pages. I, I honestly haven't a clue how that happened. I honestly don't. Well, the earpiece has a mic in it, so you can hear me. So, um, yeah, hopefully it all goes well. And hopefully after I get this video done, um, I can instantly start work on my other upcoming videos, which I admit I'm really falling behind on. Oh well, sell again. Let's get to it. Okay, now that we're back inside, got my questions on paper. Okay, quite a good number, I should say. But uh. I think for the video's sake, we should round it up a bit. Yeah. Alright, from uh, Mr. And I'm sorry in advance if I pronounce anyone's name wrong. I apologize in advance. From a Mr. Ellen Marf. <clears throat> Excuse me. Question is, what's a cheap and easy way to build a double track transfer for a small layout? Well, I would say the sliders you get from drawers, that would actually be pretty simple. Pretty basic, really. Dead simple. You can buy drawer sliders from pretty much any hardware store, I think, really. Or just go to a recycle center and uh, grab them off an old set of drawers, really. Shouldn't be too hard. I hope that answers your question. Okay, next, from... Uh, Mr. Toby Martin, what is my fave model railway? Um, that's actually a good question. Uh, as in from YouTube? Um, okay, that's that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> oh wow, that is a really good one. Um, I actually don't have any favorites if I'm honest. I all view them as equals. They're all very unique in their own ways. They're all very highly well done. And I respect the people who do them. Uh, yeah. Because they took so much time and effort to get them as they are now. It is only something I can hope for later on with my own layouts. Both the big one and the little one down here. Uh, I hope that answered your question there. Uh, oh gosh, I forgot about this one. Adrian Pullen. Again, sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong there, mate. But, uh, <laughs> alright, Adie. Why'd you ask? Uh, what made me model in UK stuff? Okay, that I can easily answer. No sweat. It was cheap. It was affordable. Plus, my first locomotive was a Peppercorn A1 Pacific. W.P. Allen in Doncaster Green, as it was. I bought that about seven years ago now at a local model show for about 80 New Zealand dollars. And considering I was still going over the phase after my home, my old home burnt down, uh, I was I was actually very quite poor. I honestly was quite poor back then. Now, job, I can buy pretty much a new model a week. <laughs> but, uh, joking aside, uh, yeah. It was just that cheap and affordable, I could easily get hold of it, yeah. 
And as you can see, it just kept growing and growing to the point where I got two layouts, four boxes full of models and a shelf full of them behind me. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next question from uh, ooh, Kelly Haddon. If I could have any model of any subject, that's not RTR or kit made, what would it be? Okay, that's actually a very good one. Uh, that's not kit made. That is not RTR. I got it. <clears throat> uh, yeah. That uh, William Francis Bear Garrett. The industrial Barry Garrett, I should say. It's a 040040 Garrett. It was used on a colliery line. And it could outpull an austerity, which I love. <laughs> and the cool thing was uh, the colliery it worked for, instead of the loco being on the head of the train, it was on the back end of the train to prevent runaways because it was on a hill. That is the model I would really want in RTR form if anyone ever bothers making it. Uh, I hope that answered your question, Kelly. Uh, okay, Carwin P. Lewis. I hope, like, heck, I answered uh, that right. Okay, this one makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> uh, how do I convince the missus I did not spend much? Uh, no ring for starters, and also I'm a bachelor. Quite simple. And that autofocus is time to go on my nerves, but I don't give a hoot. And, oh crap, this is a two-parter. Uh, okay, this one, I'll, this one I actually like because it's a good idea. Would a noob help video be done? As in, a video to help anyone who's a novice to the hobby. Uh, I mean, I actually, I fully, I fully support that. I fully support that. Um, actually, now I think of it, I might actually uh, spin that idea around with a few modeling friends of mine. See if a bit of a collaboration can be done. And if it can... Looks like we got a video coming up. If not, crap, I'll have to run solo or ask my friends overseas in the rest of the modeling groups. But it's a brilliant idea, though. I love that. Norman Todd asks, Do I need a fake receipt for this? I should have looked ahead on this one. Oh, man. Do I need a fake receipt for the Mrs. S no. Purely because whenever I go to the model shops or anything like that, I don't ask for a receipt. I don't. Nor do they, nor does a lady of the house have the legal right to see my uh, bank slip. As long as I pay board, I'm in the clear. Okay, Rich Smith. I'm beginning to think these names are set up somehow. Um, hmm. Would using. Hmm. Okay. Would using ash on a layout be bad as it's slightly corrosive? Huh. That's actually quite a good question. I mean, if you really want that detail, yeah, I, I would, but, use it, but, I'd have to put something like a protective layer on before the ash layer, and I wouldn't let it go near the rails or anything like that, but, I would specifically just use wood ash, really, because you get a good color variation from it. 
Um, I hope that answers your question because it's a subject that I very rarely ever glimpse at. So, yeah. Uh, George Roberts, what's the best baseball material? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, the little one here, it's got MDF as the top board. Otherwise, it's just simple plank timbers. Uh, this one, I think it's a type of chipboard. Uh, I'm not too sure. I got it for nothing. But I'm not too sure what it is. I think it is chipboard, really. So I'm not really the best, but I think MDF uh, would be the best material for it. Uh, of course, over time it does bow, but I think with proper support, st structural supporting, and uh, uh, you'll be good. Your layout will last decades, probably. I don't know. Uh, Chris Karis Clegg. Okay. Okay, I had to read. What's, what size for ballast? Okay, I really gotta improve my handwriting here. Um, I don't know really. I don't really use ballast that much. <laughs> I mean, I actually do have a bottle of this stuff right behind me. I actually do have a container of ballast here, and it's by Scenic Textures, which is a New Zealand company. The thing is, though, <laughs> this is about a thousand, container is meant for about a thousand cc of ballast, and it's mainline ballast. This is the only grey colour stuff I could get. The downside is, as it is graded fine, it says here, suitable for NTTNZ scale. Whoops, I was already a good kilometers home from the motor shop and I couldn't be darned turning back purely because I wasn't driving. Um, uh, sorry. All right, uh, George B asks, should I go DCC or DC and shall I have live frogs? Well, if you go DC or DCC, well, you can actually set your layout up so you can have both really. And also, some uh, live frog points uh, have self-isolating switches. Uh, I can't really depict which of which, which is the annoying bit. But, um, yeah. You can actually get electro frog points that self-isolate. Which I think is very cool. I do like that. I really do. And uh, hopefully that answers the question as best as I can do it, because, um, yeah. I don't know any much more about DCC, really. It's kind of a subject that is far above me. I'm not going to lie. But, oh well. This has been me answering your questions as best I can. And admittedly having a good laugh at a few of them. And... Uh, before anyone can start, uh, comments below on more questions to ask and all that stuff. Uh, let me just point this out. On one of the modeling pages, a whole list of about eight questions gone. No joke, I tried to check it the other day, it was gone. All the questions, every single one of them, wiped out. Which I found very weird. I found very weird. Uh, oh well, alas it is. But, in saying this, this is where I can have a little bit of freelance fun. No script or anything like that. That bit of paper I'm looking at over there, empty. <laughs> and, yeah, because sometimes when I go off my mark, off the top of my head, no filter, so I end up swearing a lot. <clears throat> okay, first of all... <laughs> Thank you for actually watching this video. Secondly, big massive shout outs to Mr. Alex Hill for doing his first face to camera. Good on you, mate. Saw the video, loved it. And love the progress on your micro layout, mate. It is going beautiful. It is brilliant. I love the detail work. I'm not gonna lie, I do like it. I mean, it is pretty much polar opposite to my one. Mine is industrial mine, 
Yours is a mode of power depot. Depot. Yeah. Sorry, tongue twist. It's about 10 o'clock at night now, so yeah. <clears throat> Also, just because I can, I want to give a shout out to one of my longest supporting uh, subscribers, which is Richard of New Junction. Because uh, during my early YouTubing career, I admit, he was actually a very good well, supportive help, trying to help guide me along the good lines of Motor Railway YouTube. And helped point out the pros and cons of some aspects of the hobby. And I say a massive cheers to that, mate. Massive cheers. And I just remembered I gave him a bit of cheek on one of his review videos. Whoops. It was, oh, it's, over, it's about over a year ago, and that company is now, ooh, liquefied, I should say. So, I think I'm in the clear now. <laughs> yeah. But, all jokes aside, thank you all for watching this. This is Up On Old saying, good night.